All right, YouTube, occult literature video number 16 on the operation of demons. Sure to be a fan favorite. It's a Michael Sellis work. Uh, Sellus or Sellos. The spelling changes. It's like some of these authors. People can't quite figure out how to spell the name, but that's okay. It's still one of the most interesting works that I've edited. 34 pages, so it's one of the shorter works, but it's, uh, it's quite interesting, and I'll go a little bit into why uh, here for the benefit of those who may wish to read it. Uh, as always, link in the description to the Amazon uh, release that I've made, the edition that I created for this work, second uh, link as well to my books blog with this and other material upon it. Uh, and it's still under maintenance, unfortunately, at this date. I'm going to I'm gonna try. I'm going to try to get that done sooner rather than later, trust me, just for ease of use. Um, this work is one of my favorites. Probably you can guess why, because it has to do with demonology. Not demonology in the in the sense of the Ars Gosha, like providing elaborate sort of rituals and symbols and so forth to actually call demons, but it does go into the nature, the characteristics, the divisions of demons, how they're called forth in a more general sense. I point this out in the foreword, and this is something that must be said. This, although it apparently doesn't mean to be a skeptical work on, on the actual concept of demons, it notes two specific things about demonology that are that, that are way ahead of their time as far as observing them. The first is that, uh, in one case, uh, Timothy and Thracian, which are holding a dialogue, that's the core of the work here. It's in, it's in the form of a Socratic dialogue. Uh, Thracian mentions that uh, at one point there was a woman who was possessed by a demon, and she was all confused and kind of fucked up and, and didn't know what she was doing, couldn't really speak, and then sort of was speaking gibberish, which they took to mean another language, as in many cases uh, happens. Uh, for instance, we look at Hollywood uh, fixation on exorcism or on demons in general. We see basically the same thing. We see the demon possessed, is their head is rotating and they're not making sense, and then all of a sudden they start speaking in Latin. Well, if any of the little babblings that the demon-possessed individual was spitting out sounded anything like a recognizable language, they would immediately ascribe it to the miraculous and in, essentially to the demonic. Uh, this is essentially saying that this woman had brain damage or was demented and they took it to mean that she was possessed. That's a little bit ahead of its time because, of course, now looking back in retrospect, that's basically often the case. Uh, what we see are the old disproportionately during the burning times were the ones being burned. The second story, he encounters a sort of uh, necromancer or devil worshiper who gives him some sort of food and it makes him see all sorts of weird things. And this person was like a former, you know, devil worshiper and then you know, left the path but still understood it and he starts hallucinating. And what it appears to be alluding to is the imbibing of some sort of hallucinogen, which also fits in. Uh, this is this is before the period in which some of the Scandinavian and European scientists at large uh, began to understand the concept of witching oil really related to drug use. It was a hallucinogen. It was datura or henbane or so or something like that. And it had nothing to do with anything strictly spiritual unless you take the psychedelic as spiritual. Now, I'm, I've got mixed feelings on this. This leads right into the next video I'm going to be doing for psychedelic spirituality, which is something I wrote. Uh, but this is fairly well understood. As far as the divisions of demons go, there are, there are multiple different kinds. There's the subterranean, there's these weird aquatic demons, there's uh, what you might term chaos demons that he's talking about or something. It's almost like a modern demonology tract. Uh, it really gets into the substance of the different types of demons. It's kind of warped. Um, it speaks about the incident in the Bible, of course, where the pigs are driven into the sea. Uh, Jesus uh, goes after the demoniac who's sort of hanging out in the graveyard, and he's possessed by, like, a whole legion of spirits. Jesus drives them out. They enter the bodies of pigs and go drown the pigs. Uh, it explains that from a perspective that I myself had never heard before uttered by a Christian. I think I have a great appreciation for this track, but it really is one of the best. Um, if you're interested at all, 
in demons, um, whether from a skeptical perspective, a Christian perspective, devil-worshipping perspective. This is an excellent work. Uh, it comes strongly recommended by me. Uh, again, link in the description to where you can purchase this work on Amazon, my edition. Second link to my books blog, still under maintenance. Sorry about that. That's about all. Peace out.